the Healthcare Labyrinth podcast is back for another episode. Join Mark S. Ryan, a veteran health plan and health technology executive, as he explores the world of healthcare. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the Healthcare Labyrinth podcast. My name is Mark Ryan, and it's a pleasure to be hosting the podcast. And thanks to everyone for listening in. Um, I just wanted to talk again about um, the last four weeks of podcast before this one covered my modest health care reform proposal and some deep dives into my three tenants, which are price reform, universal access, and pivoting from utilization management to care management. So if you want to learn more about my health care reform proposal outlined in one podcast and then three deep dives into the three tenants. You can go back to the last four weeks prior to this podcast to learn more. In May and June, I also sort of wrote about my modest health care reform proposal and gave you details in the blog as well. So go to the blog tab or the podcast tab uh, to hear more about my modest health care reform proposal. This week, we're going to get probably even a little more arcane because we're going to talk about uh, recent lawsuits challenging the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, decision on how they calculated 2024 star ratings and um, how uh, two judges effectively said they did it wrong and the fact that CMS had to come back and recalculate star scores for 2024, throwing uh, the 2025 bids really into a quandary and leading to a great deal of backlash here. So we'll talk about this. Um, what this is being dubbed out there is called Tukey Gate. And we'll tell you a little more about what Tukey means in a little while. But of course, when I write about this issue, my spell check wants to know if I mean Turkey Gate. I do not. It is called Tukey Gate. So again, we'll give you a little more background on that too. So let's talk about um, why star ratings are so important. Well, first of all, uh, the quality rating or star rating that a plan gets at Medicare Advantage uh, dictates the kind of funding it's going to get. We won't go too much into detail here. In previous podcasts, I did. But basically, you are ranked on a scale from one to five star. Uh, uh, Plans getting a three star get some help in giving some additional supplemental benefits. And the higher your rating, three and a half, four, four and a half, the more help you get. And that really comes uh, in the way of two things. Uh, What is known as the rate rebate for uh, plans that get three, three and a half, four, four and a half, or five, get a rebate. And it goes up as your quality score increases from three to five. And then number two, plans that score four star or greater get an additional 5% added to their rate benchmark. So the combinations of the rate rebate and the quality score really helps higher quality plans compete in the market. Now, we've seen star scores get hurt of late. Uh, Prior to COVID, for example, just short of about 50% of plans had high star ratings and just short of um, just short of about 80 percent as an example uh, of enrollees enrolled in these high star rating plans which generally are four star or greater during covid we had um, flexibilities and i don't really look at what the stars were then because a lot of calculations were lifted and things like that But once STAR came back in, in 2023 and 24, with all of its normal calculations, we saw huge problems with STAR scores tumbling. The number of four-star plans or greater dropped to 42%, and the number of individuals in these highly rated plans dropped as well. So we've seen some STAR challenges from plans lately. Uh, and that's why this star lawsuit in Tukey Gate was so important. 
So with that explanation, let's get over and talk about the lawsuit and the decision. Well, the first lawsuit that was decided was Scan Group's lawsuit. Uh, and Scan Group is a prominent and very highly successful nonprofit MA plan based in California and serving a number of Western states. SCAN successfully won a challenge in a federal district court on its star ratings for 2024. The case centered on the introduction of what's known as the Tukey Outlier Formula. This was a brand new formula that was put in effective for the calculation of the 2024 star ratings. What it effectively did is took statistical outliers at the bottom and at the top of all of the plan's ratings for various star measures, not all, but various ones. And in so doing, by taking the bottom performance and the top performance out, it changed the cut points for these impacted measures, where you score one, two, three, four, or five. And it had the effect, the Tukey outlier provision, of inflating cut points rather dramatically in many cases, which made it harder for plans to achieve uh, very high star quality measure scores on given measures. And so this two key outlier came in in 24 for the first time. And again, the uh, cut points swelled and made it more difficult in many measures for plans to achieve high ratings. The court decision, in essence, said that CMS violated the Administrative Procedures Act when it ignored the plain language of the regulation related to how you have to calculate the 2024 scores. While Tukey was coming in, the regulation still had what were known as guardrail language, and that guardrail language basically said that notwithstanding any other calculations, a, a cut point at the high and the low end of each of these measures, one to two, two to three, three to four, and so on, cannot change by more than 5%. This guardrail regulation was put in earlier and was meant to sort of make sure that uh, the star measure calculations were rather predictable from year to year. They didn't want to see wide changes. Now, we just told you that the two key formula actually would have created large changes. So the guardrails and the regulation and the imposition of two key were actually very much in conflict. Now, CMS is under great pressure budgetarily and political to rein in so-called overpayments to MA plans. We've talked about this in the past. So what CMS wanted to do when Tukey was coming in for the 24 star rating calculations was to immediately implement the entirety of the savings that would result from essentially putting in place the Tukey outlier change. Again, the Tukey change removes those outlier performances at the top and the end and makes it more difficult for plans to achieve high results on the non-consumer assessment survey measures. There are bigger outliers at the bottom, and that had the effect of making it tougher to achieve higher ratings because star rating points inflated for three, four, and five, and higher rated plans at the time uh, came down because they didn't score as high on certain measures as they did before because, again, CMS was not putting the right guardrails in place. They essentially ignored the 5% max for most guardrails, and they basically allowed the guardrails to float as much as they did when Tukey was basically put in place. Data that came out after the initial 2024 star score calculations were published shows that previously high-performing plans, as I noted, lost so-called star power as cut points inflated upward, and they performed more poorly from 2023 to 2024. Their actual performance may not have gone down, but the cut points rose to give them lower scores on those measures. Again, the problem here is that another regulatory process, 
the placing of guardrails on the changes in measure cut points from year to year to ensure better predictability and stability was not followed by CMS. The provision again limits changes up and down for the non-consumer assessment survey measures to no more than 5% in most cases. That was introduced, as I said, for 2023, and Tukey was then introduced in 2024. Again, CMS wanted to immediately implement the full effect of Tukey to save dollars and to get themselves out of political criticism over overpayments in MA. But again, it botched its regulatory rulemaking. It did not remove or suspend the application of the guardrails. It noticed actually that it erred and attempted to slip guidance in on this on two occasions in what is known as the preamble or comment section of proposed rules. But as the court noted, this is not the actual code of federal regulations text. It really has no force of law, but simply explains the rationale for its decisions and rulemaking. If there's something explicit in the rule, the preamble cannot be used to override it. Only in certain cases where there's some confusion within its, the rule itself can you then look at the preamble to determine if something should be interpreted in a given way. So uh, anyway, they never put it in the actual Code of Federal Regulations, only in the preamble. And therefore, the courts basically decided that CMS should have implemented the 5% guardrails in most cases to limit the move of the cut points uh, related to the Tukey outlier implementation. When plans received their 2024 star ratings, most of them were shocked. Their measure scores went down, especially the highly rated plans, as did their aggregate scores. Cut point changes for measures were greater than the 5% compared with published 2023 ratings. Plans again had assumed that Tukey would be implemented, but effectively be phased in through the 5% guardrail limitation over time, 5% per year, for example. Again, CMS implemented an alternative strategy to get around the guardrail problem it had in the regulations. What it did was simulate as if Tukey was implemented in 2023. It then uh, you know, basically put Tukey in for 2024 and used those results to calculate the guardrails at 5%. But again, the guardrail provision in the rule is very clear. It says the guardrail should not increase year to year from what was reported. So CMS had to take the reported 2023 cut points and cap changes at 5% in 2024 for the uh, measures that are impacted by the 5% guardrails. They could not go and arbitrarily simulate Tukey in 2023 and then compare that to 2024 to determine what the guardrail should be. Again, SCAN, in its lawsuit, as well as another lawsuit by Elevance Health that had the same conclusion, the judges basically said you did not follow the regulation, and therefore you had to go back and calculate SCAN's, all of SCAN's contract score ratings, and one of Elevance Health's in the other lawsuits ratings in the state of Georgia. So what does all this mean for uh, CMS? Well, it actually opened up a huge Pandora's box that CMS had to quickly figure out a strategy on. Uh, first, the costs are overwhelming. Uh, again, CMS wanted to uh, basically implement this all in one year to save a ton of money. Uh, the courts ruled they couldn't. Uh, SCAN alone uh, probably will gain about $250 million in bonus revenue to go back to benefits to its enrollees. Um, Elevance, SCAN, and everybody collectively probably uh, will gain somewhere between a billion and a billion 
five in revenue, probably somewhere around a billion three. So it creates some uh, financial problems for Medicare because it wasn't expected based on what CMS did. And number two, um, it will also create more political discussion about overpayments. So when we come back from the break, we'll talk a little bit about what uh, the predicament that CMS was in and how they quickly tried to solve it. Be back in about one minute. The Healthcare Labyrinth is no ordinary website. It features news and commentary from one of the nation's leading healthcare policy and technology experts. Mark Ryan combs the internet for the latest healthcare news and publishes a news feed each weekday with summations and Mark's insights. Twice a week, Mark publishes a blog to go deep into a current issue. And of course, Mark hosts a podcast each week to delve even further. All of this is available at healthcarelabyrinth.com. Visit each day for the latest happenings in healthcare. As well, learn more about Mark's book, The Healthcare Labyrinth, at the website. That's healthcarelabyrinth.com, your go-to source for healthcare news. Welcome back, and we'll hope you're enjoying this episode of the Healthcare Labyrinth podcast. We're talking about Tukigate and CMS having to recalculate all of the star scores for 2024. So once the lawsuit was decided, uh, CMS didn't really have much of a decision to make here. So first, it would have been incredibly unfair for them to recalculate just scans in Elevance's health contracts, right? Uh, That would have gained those two plans a great deal of funding, but it just simply would not be fair to the other plans out there. Number two, so they really had to recalculate 2024 scores for all MA contracts. Number two, um, they also had a big problem with 2025 star scores. So the 2025 star scores will be calculated between now and roughly the end of September, and they will be announced in October for 2025 plan year. And there was no way, given the court decisions, that CMS could follow the same methodology they did in 24 for 25 scores because they would immediately be impacted as well. So already you see they have to recalculate 2024 scores as well as 2025. Well, they also had a big problem with benefits and bids that were already by early June into CMS for the 2025 calendar year. And uh, to recap again, star scores in payment years uh, are off by one year. The 2024 star scores are used for 2025 payments and therefore the benefit design Uh, as well as the bids. So the bids for 2025 were due in roughly early June. These lawsuits came out right around the same time, and they could not really uh, not allow plans to come back uh, with uh, and not have recalculated 2024 star scores because that would impact the amount of benefits offered to beneficiaries in calendar year 25. So thus, uh, a triple whammy for CMS. 2024 star scores were wrong. 2025 star scores would likely be wrong. And the benefits and the bids for the 2025 calendar year were basically wrong. And many plans, because of low star scores, were shedding benefits in calendar year 25. So very quickly, CMS recognized the errors of their ways, and they basically came back and did the following. So for 2024, they uh, recalculated all scores. Uh, They probably were working on this even before the lawsuits were decided, just in case. And they basically did a hold harmless scenario. If somebody achieved a better star score when they used the appropriate guardrails from 2023, to 2024, that plan would get that higher star rating. Uh, If someone would have been hurt by it, probably a minority of contracts, they were not going to be impacted for 2024 star year. They would keep 
the original star rating that was announced. They also gave plans that had increases in scores and had original scores of three or greater to resubmit bids in a very, very tight couple of week time frame. They could redesign their benefits because they had greater revenue for 2025 now because their star score went up in 2024, and they could redesign those benefits and perhaps mitigate the benefit losses that they had originally probably put into their benefits uh, for 2025. So again, by the end of June, bids and benefits had to be resubmitted if you wanted to. We're hearing that some plans did not do that, even though they got a higher star rating because of the uncertainty of rates and the uncertainty of what would happen with star scores in 25 and beyond. But some other plans did resubmit their bids uh, and they adjusted their benefits upward and will have richer benefits in 2025, which frankly was the right thing to do. When CMS made that error, what really was happening because of a whole bunch of market forces lower rate increases, lower star ratings, regulatory changes, many plans were projecting to reduce benefits in 2025. When the error with star occurred for 2024, which impacted 2025 payment rates, they were right to recalculate and they were right to allow resubmissions of bids for some of the plans that would have seen a higher star score in recalculations compared to with what they did get published originally because of the CMS error in terms of applying the regulation. So with that, we're going to take our next break and we'll come back to sort of just say where CMS may be going in the future. Lilac Software is proud to work with the Healthcare Labyrinth website to educate people on the healthcare system. At Lilac, we believe transparency is so important in healthcare. The healthcare system is opaque, and Lilac is trying to bring clarity to data and unleash the best member care, reduce costs, and improve outcomes. Our cloud-native payer platform revolutionizes data insights and analytics. Plans have all the data they need, but in silos locked away in point solutions. At Lilac, we solve the data fragmentation problem and help plans turn complex data into actionable insights, leading to greater operating leverage, tight cost controls, and healthier members. Health plans can improve star scores, reduce medical expense, drive revenue, and more. Quite simply, with Lilac, you can drive better business and health outcomes. Learn more at lilacsoftware.com. Welcome back from our second break, and thanks for listening in on the uh, Healthcare Labyrinth podcast. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, to have you aboard. And we just concluded our second break talking about the fact about what CMS did. They recalculated the 2024 CMS star scores, and they uh, then allowed plans that had uh, greater increases if they had a star of three or of above originally to resubmit bids and benefits, which hopefully mitigates some of the impacts in benefits in 2025. Although I do think that we'll still see pretty phenomenal reductions in benefits because of all the trends out there that we talked about. So this again will be pretty expensive to uh, CMS. They wanted to do it all at once in terms of implementing two key that will result in probably between a billion and a billion five. I say it's probably about a billion three in increased costs in 2025. And so that loss um, probably took CMS by surprise. Uh, CMS was right to recalculate and fix the 2025 benefits, but there will be huge pressure on CMS to save dollars. And politically, they're under huge pressure to, to solve what is viewed as overpayments in MA, as we've talked about. So with CMS under pressure to find savings and solve that political problem, where might they go to save dollars in the future? 
Again, they wanted to implement Tukey in 2024 and get that star bonus savings. They can't now. They're going to spend probably over a billion dollars more than they expected. So where do they go? Well, let's talk about a few areas. One of them already in regulation and three others that are not in regulation yet, but they could propose regulations to save some dollars in the STAR program and reduce overpayments. So number one, already in regulation, and we'll talk about this as a savings, is the health equity index. The health equity index is slated under regulation for STAR year 2027, with measurements actually here now, um, data from measurement year 2024 and 2025 will be used in calculating the health equity index in 2027. Now, this was a major thing that the Biden administration wanted to do. There's a lot of data out there that suggests individuals um, that are of minority uh, populations um, that are disabled, that are poor, all have major impacts in terms of health outcomes compared to others in society. So the Biden administration made the health equity and the health equity index in Medicare Advantage uh, a very big priority. So in the MA STAR program, the health equity index is going to take the place of the reward factor. The reward factor is actually a just sort of a generic add-on to the star rating process, which is paid to plans that are consistently high performing. Probably a good idea, and that's why it was in the system. But CMS will create this health equity index to replace that reward factor, and it will seek to reward plans that are doing pretty well on health equity uh, issues. Now, it starts out a little bit slow. It doesn't really get into minority populations or things like that. But initially, the health equity index uh, is that barometer will be people that are of uh, low income, either duly eligible for Medicaid or people that receive the low income subsidy in the Part D program, as well as if you're disabled. So that's sort of the first effort in the health equity index. And we expect that this will take on additional attributes, including minority population attributes in the future. Here's the issue. Why will the health equity index actually save dollars in the STAR program and ultimately reduce overpayments? Well, current analyses, especially published by Milliman, the actuary, suggest that currently about 0.3 of the 0.4 star measure increase that's eligible in the aggregate for the reward factor is paid out each year. About 75% of the 0.4 is paid out. And again, it's only to consistently high performing plans. When the HIE comes in, the latest estimates, again, from CMS and also from Milliman, suggest that the health equity index will initially pay out as little as 0.1 of 0.4 possible aggregate star points, so 25% of the total rather than three-quarters of the total. Thus, there are major built-in savings because plants are not expected to do as well in terms of driving those health equity achievements versus high-performing plans consistently performing well on the reward factor. So CMS originally estimated that this could be worth somewhere between $670 million in 2028 in savings and increasing to about a billion in 2033. So that's already in regulation. There will be about a billion dollars that will be saved initially, at least, uh, when the health equity index replaces the reward factor. And that's roughly the cost of the full uh, savings under Tukey. Now, there are three other things that could be proposed to save uh, CMS and the Medicare program some money. So the first item that could be proposed is eliminating cut point guardrails entirely. These are the guardrails that are in place now in the regulation that stop CMS from 
um, essentially implementing two key in one fell swoop, and CMS could come back and propose to eliminate them entirely. Well, in a December 22 draft MA and Part D rule for 2024, CMS proposed to eliminate the guardrails currently in regulation. Um, but the agency did not finalize the proposal in its final 2024 rule in April 23. Will CMS come back and eliminate guardrails for a future year in its draft 2026 MA and Part D rule that is due out in draft form in December? Will they do that because of what happened in court? My read is CMS would need to come back and propose it again since it not, did not implement it in the final 2024 rule. The guardrails were meant to improve predictability and stability of cut points when they were initially proposed. CMS now argues that the guardrails are no longer needed as Tukey will take wide swings and cut points away. And CMS also indicated that guardrails are actually making it easier for plans to achieve higher ratings on some measures. The elimination would have the effect of helping CMS accelerate the two key savings it now has to limit due to the court decisions. So that could come because of the court ruling, total elimination of the guardrails. Another thing that could be proposed to save monies in the STAR program and reduce overpayments is what's known as the hold harmless provision for improvement measures. In that same draft rule I talked about for 2024 that was issued in December 2022 in interim form, CMS proposed to remove four and four and a half star plans from what is known as the hold harmless provision related to quality improvement measures and the calculation of the overall star score for each contract. Currently, any contract slated to be four star or greater in a given year cannot be negatively impacted by the two five weighted quality improvement measures. They get the higher of their calculated score with or without the improvement measures added in. This proposal, again, was not finalized in the final 2024 rule. So again, CMS would have to come back and propose again to eliminate it in the future in a future rule. Uh, what their proposal was was that four and four and a half star plans would not be held harmless. The improvement calculation would have to go into their final score, whether or not it negatively impacted them. Five star plans would still be protected. So again, CMS would have to come back and propose it since they didn't finalize it. At the time, CMS estimated net savings of between $2.1 billion in 2027 and growing to $3.5 billion. So a huge amount of savings there that would be added as well to the savings under the Health Equity Index. Lastly, I would note that what they could also do is do a tweak on eliminating cut points uh, for the, the, the guardrail cut points entirely. They could What they could do here is they could do a one-year guardrail suspension to allow the entirety of the uh, two key savings to be achieved in a future year. And so that's the third concept. So with the problem of increased savings, because of the guardrails and the lawsuits, in some, CMS could do probably one of three things, assuming you already count the health equity index as savings. They could eliminate cut point guardrails entirely. They could uh, eliminate the hold harmless for improvement measures for four and four and a half star plans, but still safeguard five star plans and they could perhaps eliminate for one year uh, the guardrails to allow two key to be immediately implemented in that year. So in conclusion, again, some of these could be recommended by CMS given the costs and the political issue of overpayments, but it's also equally as possible that while this pressure is on to curb perceived overpayments, 
CMS could also decide that too much change in this time of financial turmoil, given rate hikes and things like that, is very risky, and they may hold tight for some time. But the bottom line is that lawsuits and the recalculation of 2024 star likely gave plans only a temporary reprieve. Um, if CMS does not come back for additional savings in star to counter overpayments in MA, uh, immediately they will do so at some point in the near term in the future. So further changes will come. And what plans really need to do is hunker down to drive achievement in STAR to mitigate these potential losses in the future. With that, we'll conclude this edition of the Healthcare Labyrinth podcast, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for joining Mark and the Healthcare Labyrinth podcast. Go to healthcarelabyrinth.com each day for the latest healthcare news. See you next week on the next Healthcare Labyrinth podcast.